Over the next few videos, what we're going to do is show you how to create a simple yet functional particle system. Uh, up to this point, really what we've been showing you is all of the various you know, properties and components that you can add to create a particle system, but we haven't really shown you how to make anything useful. Right, we really haven't shown any workflow along with it. This right. will actually take you into the process, like Zach was saying, a simple particle system but a little bit more complex than everything we've looked at so far. I'll have several different components to make up one overall effect. That's right, and the effect that we are going to create is an arc welding spark system. So like when, you're, when you see somebody working with an arc welder, you see what, and what comes out. You get uh, the great big bright blue flash right there where the, the arc is actually striking. Uh, you see the, the sheet of orange sparks that fly out of that and maybe bounce off the ground and whatnot. And generally, there's some kind of a smoke that rises out of the whole thing. So what we're going to do is take that a step at a time and construct it and show you basically how to make that effect. So let's start with what we know. Again, you always need to know your effect. You need to know what is involved in the effect you're going to create. If you need to go get video footage or if you need to, you know, go watch a movie where you know this kind of effect happened, some kind of an explosion. I mean, I don't recommend you go out in your backyard and start blowing things up just to see how an explosion works. But, you know, if that's what it takes, just please be very careful and I don't condone that sort of action. We did not recommend you do that. We certainly did not recommend that you do that. But uh, reference can be really important if you're tackling a particular effect for the first time. Now, what we're going to do is start off by just creating a basic particle system. And since I've already created several from scratch, we're just going to go under game object, create other, and make a particle system. Now my workflow for particles is fairly simple. I start off just by asking myself to name one thing that is wrong with the effect, and I just go from there. But first, we know there are several different parts for our arc welding system. We know about the blue flash, we know about the orange sparks, we know about the smoke, so we need to just figure out which one of those we're going to work on first. It doesn't really matter which one you tackle first, but I really want to do the orange sparks first. I don't know why. I just like them. They're cool. So let's say we want to do that, and the first thing is I would rename the particle system as soon as I get it in. Let's name this sparks, and then because it makes things easier on me, I'm going to also create a new empty game object with control shift N, which I will name arc welding particle system. Now let's take our sparks and just parent that directly underneath. And the cool thing about doing that is I can select the sparks and then jump up to their parent system and get all those pesky polygons out of the way. As a matter of fact, if I hit the Q key, we get rid of everything. The only thing that you're going to have to keep in mind if you do this is if you want to change the properties of this uh, spark system, you need to select it, lock the inspector in the upper right hand corner of your screen, and then go back to your your parent game object. Just watch out for this because it's real easy to forget that you have the inspector locked and then start changing properties on something that you don't mean to. And I've done it so many times that it's not even funny. So here we are. Let's uh, start off with our particle system. And the first thing, like I said, is just to name one thing that is wrong with this. Now there's a lot of things wrong with it, but again, just try to narrow it down to one. And there's a lot of different ways you can go. For me, the first problem is that the particles are being emitted from too great of an area. Uh, the, an arc welder will tend to spawn the particles off from a tiny little point, right there at the, the point where the arc is actually reaching the metal that's being welded. So let's start off there. We'll take our ellipsoid and bring down its size. We're going to set this to 0.1 by 0.1 by 0.1 and give all of our particles a little bit of time to die out. And now, of course, this is taking place in a much smaller area. We could probably go even lower than this, like say 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and 0 0.05. And that shrinks it down even further. Now, what's the next thing that's wrong? Well, obviously, the particles need to fly out a little bit. And there's different ways you can handle this motion. You could have it all kind of flying off in uh, kind of various tangent directions. You could do a single like sheet, like a fan. What I'm going to do is keep things fairly simple. We'll start off by applying a little bit of local x velocity. Now, why am I choosing local? It's because I'd like to be able to rotate this particle system and control the direction that the, the uh, sparks are flying out. So let's take our local x 
and we'll set this to uh, we can just start with three and then we can make modifications from there as we need to and now we've got our particles flying out and that's pretty good now of course because we use local we can grab the spark system and we can rotate it up. and notice right there I just jumped down a level from the arc welding particle system down to the spark system so that I can rotate that up just a little bit now rotating them up is all well and good but at some point you'd like gravity to kick back in instead of firing them all out to the moon like we're doing right now so with the sparks system selected notice not the game object but the actual sparks particle system I'll go under component come down to particles and drop on a world particle collider that's not at all what I meant to do it's like my brain just totally locked on that we can use the collider sure but that's not what I wanted to add so you can just laugh at me on that one um, we're not even adding a component right now uh, that's wow that was great but no I totally meant to step ahead I totally meant to do and I don't even have notes I don't know why I'm jumping a step ahead I'm making all this stuff up gravity let's grab our forces and let's just set this to negative three and then you'll see my master plan and why <laughs> I put the world particle collider in there Mwahaha. I had it all planned from the start no matter what you might think all right, so uh, with a little bit of force, you can see we're pulling the particles back down. Of course, you could tweak this if you wanted to be pulled down a little bit uh, more quickly. So let's pull that down to about four. I also would like to throw some variation into the motion so they're not all coming out in a straight line, uh, kind of like they are now. So let's go to our local velocity, and let's set Y and Z to, I don't know, let's try 0.3 by 0.3 and just see what we get. No, oh, your local velocity, random velocity is what you're looking You're for. absolutely right. So let's put that back down to zero and jump down to random. And let's try 0.3 and 0.3. Well, we could, we could even try a little bit of random as well, just to kind of mix that up. And so now we certainly have some motion that is relatively spark-like. There's only a few things I might do. Uh, we might take our world particle collider which I didn't even really mean to add but hey since it's here we might as well use it right uh, let's take our collision energy loss and set this to about half a second and that is killing most of our particles by the time they hit that second bounce which is really all I'm going for okay so that's looking pretty good of course there's all kinds of different ways you can tweak that but the next thing I'd like to handle is the fact the sparks are completely the wrong color and to change that we need to put a material on them right now they just have the default particle so I'm gonna go down to element zero click on my select button and it just so happens I'm fortunate enough to have a spark material here so let's just double click on this or we okay let me say this we can add this spark material as it is or we could be extra careful and create our own now I don't plan on making any significant changes to this material so I'm just going to drop it on as is. And you can see what it's doing if I click off of this real quick. It's just creating little stretched out orange, very spark-like uh, particles for us. But there's a problem with them. And what's the next problem, Lee? Well, they're not really stretching. That's right. We need these particles to stretch if they are to look like sparks. So let's come down to stretch particles and set this from billboard over to stretch. And now we have some changes to make. Now we can play with velocity scale and length scale. I usually start off with velocity scale. So we can stretch those out and then we can tweak a little bit with length scale if we want a little bit of custom control. But it's just kind of all in the eye of the beholder. But then this, of course, leads us to our next problem. Yeah, these are pretty big. Yeah, that they're while they're stretching out nicely, they're just a little bit too fat. So we go all the way back up to our ellipsoid particle emitter and let's set these down to we could try um, 0.01 by 0.01 and those are okay but at this particular resolution which is pretty low for recording videos um, it's just they look a little bit too aliased and chunky so let's try 0.02 by 0.02 we'll double the size to add a little bit of thickness and there we go now a lot of the changes from here would be purely cosmetic and based on uh, on your particular tastes like for instance we could take the random Z and actually kick that up a little bit higher so we get more of a horizontal fanning out of the sparks. We could also kick up the emission rate, uh, say to about 200 here, so we're getting a lot more 
particles being spawned. We can also take the min emission and pull it way down, and that'll just give us more variation from one second to the next, instead of such a consistent uh, dispersal of particles. So there we go. I mean, again, now a lot of things from here would just be up to you, the designer, as to, as to if there's anything you want to change. But that gets the sheets of orange sparks problem solved for our arc welding particle system. And for now, that's all we're going to do. Now, when we come back, we'll take a look at the next problem, which is the little bright, super blue spot that you're not actually supposed to look at when you're seeing arc welding. But we'll t again, we'll take care of that in the next video. For now, that'll wrap things up for this video. Thank you for watching.